Ladies and gentlemen, for this first one we have that. The front view of a dock house is made up of a square with an isosceles triangle on top. The dock house is 1.35 meters high and 0.9 meters wide and sits on a square base. The top of the rectangular surfaces of the roof of the dock house are to be painted. Find the area to be painted. All right, super exciting stuff. See? So for these type of exercises that it seems like they do not give you a lot, you really need to focus on the buzzwords. Okay, these buzzwords are going to be hints for how to approach the problem, what information is missing, what that they can give you, etc. So, let's read it again, thinking in buzzwords. The front view of a doghouse, okay, so front view makes reference to this guy here. So you have to, this is what I see on the front view of the doghouse, is made up of a square, okay? So that, that tells me that this guy here is a square. Ta-da! With an isosceles triangle on top. So this guy here. See? All right, I'm going to stop right there. Let's apply what it just told us. So the fact that it's a square means that this side here, 0 0.9, makes this side here 0 0.9, makes this side here 0 0.9, makes this height here 0 0.9. Aha! Uh -huh. And what does the fact that it's an isosceles triangle give me? It gives me that this angle is equal to this angle, and that this side is equal to this side. See? Let's remember that an isosceles triangle has two sides and two angles that are the same, while an equilateral triangle is one that has all of them the same. See? And your last type of triangle is a scalene triangle, which is it's just weird shit. Like, all the angles are different, all the sides are different. It's, you know, it's a special boy. See? So just a quick recap. You have the isosceles. Two of them are the same. Uh, the equilateral, they're all the same. All angles are the same. And then the scalene, which is, you know, whatever. Not even he knows what it is. All right. So those are the two types of triangle. Here we have an isosceles one. I already described it. Uh, I got all the info I could. So boom, boom, boom. Suddenly, my diagram looks a lot nicer. See? You have to capitalize on the information that it gives you and work from there. So let me erase this real quick, make a little bit of space. Yeah. All right, we keep going. They tell us that uh, the dock house is 1.35 meters high. That is here, so I don't worry about that. 0 0.9 meters wide, that is here, and sits on a square base. All right, that, that it sort of tells me it's a square base just by giving me both of these 0.9s. See, you can assume that it's a square from there. But still, you want to double check that all the information they give you, you're taking out all you can out of it. See? All right. The top of the rectangular surfaces of the roof of the doghouse are to pay, be painted. All right, that is another hint, actually, um, because rectangular surface. So that tells me that, hey, what you're trying to paint, which is this guy right here, is a rectangle. Ah, interesting. And so what do I know about this rectangle? Well, I already know one thing. I know that this side here is 0 0.9. is also up here. I also have a 0 0.9 right there. Ah, so what is the height? Once I have uh, the, the height, I'm going to have all dimensions of my rectangle and I can find the area to be painted, right? And so this height is the same as this height here, see? Actually, the 0 0.9 is the same as this 0 0.9 over there. So what the hell is that height? Well, that height is the same height as my isosceles triangle slant height. So, hmm, let's figure out the dimensions of my isosceles triangle. So, what do I know about this isosceles triangle? Well, I know that it looks like this, that this is equal to this, these are both h, and that here I have 0 0.9. All right, what else can I figure out about it? Well, if you're not sure, take a moment, look, reflect, think, but they do give me this height here, see? And the IB, something that's kind of cool about it, is that if they give you something, you probably have to use it. And so how can I use that height to find something about my isosceles triangle? Well, I have two heights that are sort of next to each other. I have this height here and this height here. So if I subtract both, I end up with only this, which is this height here. Ah, so I can do 1.35 minus 0.9. That gives me 0 0.45. This 0 0.45 is right there. 
0 0.45. All right, and so how can I find the slant height from here? All right, so from here, there's, there's actually a couple of options. I think my favorite is noticing that, hey, uh, this triangle here is the same as this triangle here. So you can actually split them up. All right, let's look at the red one first. See, they're the same, but let's look at the red one over here. We have that this is h, that this is 0 0.45, and that here, cierto, is going to be this 0 0.9 divided by 2. 0 0.9 divided by 2 is 0.45. Okay, what else do I know? I know that this angle is equal to this angle, see, but I don't know what that is. All right, could help me in the future, who knows? But I do know that this is a right triangle. How do I know that for sure? Because I split my isosceles triangle in half. Okay, that is legal. So this is 90 degrees, 0 0.45, 0 0.45. If you have a right triangle, you should immediately be thinking of the golden rule. Well, not it's not called golden rule, but you have the Pythagoras theorem, okay? All right, so you spot a right triangle, you think of Pythagoras theorem, see? What the hell is Pythagoras theorem? A squared, B squared, C squared, okay? How do you know which one is C? Ah, a lot of people use this automatically, but they don't understand why. How do you know which one is C? C is going to be the hypotenuse. Okay, that's the fancy math word. If you want to learn it intuitively, which is how I like to teach it, it's the long one. Right, so the long one is going to be your C. All right, so the long one is here. A and B, you can switch them to place, doesn't matter. I'm going to call this A, I'm going to call this B, I'm going to call this C. All right, so 0.45, actually, there's probably more space up here. 0.45 squared plus 0.45 squared equals c squared. See? Let's remember that c is my h, the same h that is in blue. Just so that we're on the same page, I'm just going to put h here. See? Yeah. Um, all right. So I work it out using my trusty rusty calculator. You will eventually end up with something that looks like this. Um, actually, no, I'll just show you. So if I use, to get h alone, see? What is next to it? It is a squared. See, what is the opposite of squared? Square root. So I do square root to both sides. And I end up with my answer. See? What does the square root actually do? It gets rid of this and this. I end up with just h. All right? So h equals that. Got it? So I'm going to put that into my calculator. I'm going to go ahead and show you and everything. Give me one second. While it loads up. Ta -da. All right, so square root of 0.45 squared plus 0.45 squared gives me this. All right, so this is my slant height. See, so h equals 0.63639. Right, and that right there, okay, is this slant height, is this h here. So now, uh, the top of the rectangular surface of the roof to dog doghouse are to be painted. Well, I know how my rectangle looks like now. See, this h here is going to be 0 0.63396. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. So I'm going to do this guy times this guy. So it's this guy times this guy, boom, 0 0.5727, see? And so for this first one, you're going to write down, okay, the area of my rectangle is 0 0.5727, and I always write, like to put all the numbers because, you know, it's better, 5, 6, see? You want to put your answer in the correct units, so you think of the units, we have meters, you know, so we put meters. Now, if I tell you this is my answer, there are two things that are wrong here. Take a moment, think about it. One thing that is wrong is that my units have to be squared. Okay? Why? Because with units squared is going to be area. Units cubed is going to be volume. Uh, units to the power of one is just, which is the most common one, is just going to be distance. Okay? So the power of one is here. That is to the power of 1, this is to the power of 1. All right, we're on the same page. So that is one thing that is wrong, see? The other thing that is wrong is that here it says that the top of the rectangular surface is... 
parts of the roof of the doghouse are to be painted. Do not forget that there is another rectangle on the other side. Okay, my art skills are not the best, but using a little bit of imagination, you know that there is a rectangle somewhere here. See? And so you need to find the area of this rectangle that goes like this, and this rectangle that goes on the other side. See? Actually, I'm going to put it like that. See? So you have both of those rectangles, all right? So uh, I need to take this answer and multiply by 2. Okay? So I take this answer, I multiply by 2 because it is two rectangles. I'm basically adding twice, and that is my answer. So my answer is 1.14551 1, meters squared. Ladies and gentlemen, that is for the first one.